Hey guys, welcome back to another Sunday video, taking a look at the markets for the week ahead. And I wanted to start out with a little recap on a trade that I took last week. Actually, I just realized I'm not logged into my broker, so let me actually do that really quick. One second. Okay, and we are back. So I ended up taking a long position last week on the yen crosses, which of course we've got to talk about the yen crosses after that major sell-off that we saw across the board last week. I was long NZD JPY. I took it long and it uh, went sideways for a while. And then on Friday, we had a crazy run up. I made, uh, made a, a post. I was like, hey, you know what? This is looking like a great trade. And I trailed my stop loss. And my goodness, guys, thank goodness I did. Because look at this. I went long here, 92,000 units. Stopped out here feeling a little sad. I was like, well, you know, that's kind of a bummer. Uh, this trade looked really promising. I was hoping to hold it over the weekend and maybe hold it into Monday. But sure enough, the yen had other ideas with the Japanese central bank uh, basically making a more aggressive stance on how they're going to intervene on their currency to prop up the yen with the yen losing so much value in the last year or two. So anyways, um, a massive reversal happens and I close out for a very small profit. I posted that video yesterday. We had it edited and put it up on the YouTube channel yesterday. So you can go watch that trade video if you want to follow how that trade was taken. So it takes me into this week's main topic of discussion. Uh, of course, we are coming up on the the central bank reporting rotation. We've got November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. I believe those days will be very busy for uh, the Bank of England. You've got the, the U.S., uh, the Federal Reserve, etc. So those will be interesting. But let's start out by taking a look at some of the yen crosses. And you have to ask yourself, you know, hey, is this thing a buy on a retest? And in my personal opinion, the answer is actually yes. But that sell-off was so nasty on, on Friday. I mean, look at this, you guys. You had in a single candle from open to close on this four-hour bar, 421.8 pips. I mean, that is an incredible quick succession sell-off. It erased, by the way, you guys. This, this move is so nuts. It, it very rarely happens like this. It erased 32 four-hour bars of uh, upward momentum in one single candle. Just crazy. Anyway, so you ask yourself, hey, you know what? Is this thing a buy on a retest? And I, I shot a text to my friend Garrett. Uh, you know, I have a couple trading buddies, as I'm sure many of you guys do as well. Um, and, and we were talking about, you know, is the dollar yen a buy? And in my opinion, it is if we can get a deeper retracement. So I will be watching levels like 145, a big psychological level on the chart uh, going into this week. I do like the idea of looking for long side action on dollar yen. Uh, so if I draw some fibs here on the daily chart, it actually lines up really nice with the 61.8% retracement uh, at this level of previous resistance now turned support. Now I'm not rushing to jump into a trade here on the dollar yen because this thing is a falling knife right now. And so uh, I'm gonna try and be cautious, try and wait for a setup on this one. But I do like dollar yen long and I'll, I'll add some confirmation here. Dollar yen is still up high on the list in terms of the edge finder scans right now. So we can take a look at USDJPY, pull that one up and see what's going on with this. So we still have overall momentum to the upside. Uh, but again, like I said, short term, we had that big drop and I'm looking to try and catch that drop but I'm gonna do so as carefully as I possibly can. Wait for it to, to try and see if it can bottom out around that 145 mark. Anyways, the commitment of traders data still favors the dollar. Uh, it will be interesting to see. <clears throat> You know, even with the latest reporting, the yen is still not super attractive uh, at 19.67% of futures contracts opened by non-commercial traders, uh, non-commercial traders uh, long and 80% short. So still looking at this yen uh, cross and saying, hey, you know what? I don't buy it. I am more interested in being long the dollar than the yen um, until something drastic changes with the Central Bank of Japan or something, you know, really, really breaks uh, to me. It is a buy on a pullback. That's my personal opinion. I could be completely wrong about that, but I'll be looking to take that trade. If I take that trade, of course, I'll share it inside of the Discord. If you're not already in the Discord, I last week mentioned that I had a couple good trades. Uh, we were long dollar Swiss, uh, long do uh, NZD JPY, et cetera. So if you guys aren't already inside the Discord, make sure to join down below in the description and uh, you can get access to the trade alerts being shared by myself and Frank, my trading companion, and also uh, a, a member of the A1 trading team. Um, anyways, we, we also have chat rooms and stuff available. So again, all of that will be linked at the top of the description there for you if you'd like to join us. I do like dollar yen long. Uh, back to the score chart summary for a second, we get a bigger view overall. Uh, and we can see a couple other things kind of topping up the charts. Dollar Swiss up there as well. US 30 actually poking up as a long 
biased trade, which I thought was very interesting, possibly or a big factor to that. A little bit of a turnaround there on Friday with the indices. We'll show you guys that. So here's US 30 taking a look. And you can see a nice breakout to the upside there on the daily chart. Uh, a big trend reversal here, breaking to the upside uh, and possibly some more to come, in my opinion. I mean, I think we've we've possibly formed a bit of a bottom here with that last Friday close. I mean, that was a very, very strong uh, push outside of that. So will be interesting to see. And with that actually uh, brings us to, for the currency traders, some interesting crosses as well. Um, you know, you know, looking at things like maybe buying the CAD or, uh, you know, buying New Zealand yen, which is why I was long that, right? Looking at a potential risk on swing in Forex, which might actually be interesting. That gives you opportunities to look at some of the higher risk assets. For example, NZD JPY, I mentioned that I personally uh, went long this last week. I did get stopped out, but I still have an interest in potentially picking it up long again. And uh, we, we bottomed out, I you know, in hindsight, 2020, I shoulda, coulda, woulda picked up a buy trade as we came back into this zone, uh, but I might get a second chance. So coming into Monday, maybe we get a retest of that 84.5 level. I like that for possible longs, just going with the trend here. And you can kind of see uh, where we're at with moving averages. We've had a nice flip in direction, push to the upside, take a look at the uh, volatility here. Nice spike in volatility, which is great for shorter term traders. We'd love to see those uh, high volatility moves. That gives you some great opportunities to potentially get some nice risk reward trades on there. So I still like it long uh, and still looking to short the yen until further notice. So, you know, the JXY, here's the Japanese yen. And it's, it's spiked up here on Friday. Uh, but like I said, until this thing really changes its course and something ch drastic changes with the, uh, the, the Bank of Japan, um, you know, we'll continue to be short biased on it. Uh, taking a look at some other crosses, let's see, what else can we do? We'll take a look at Euro USD. Uh, so Euro dollar spiking to the upside here last week, uh, towards the end of the week. One thing that we noted, Frank and I discussed, was um, the Euro seems to be kind of following the stock market right now and seems to lack a clear direction. Uh, you can see, I, I was short biased, and I, I still technically am short biased on this one. If we take a look at the score chart summary, uh, we'll go take a look at Euro USD here. Um, and you can see it still gets a negative five uh, in categories like the commitment of traders data. The dollar is still very heavily favored. Um, if you take a look at seasonality, the months of October, November, still negative uh, biased for, for the Euro, basically expecting that, you know, based on historically what prices do during these months, we see a decline in the Euro dollar. Um, so that can kind of be interesting. You have a trend to the downside still. Uh, inflation, employ uh, employment, and interest rates favor the U.S. dollar or the, the U.S. Um, so that tends to be another couple of factors here for shorting the Euro dollar. Um, but like I said, I think you get a little bit of a, a sympathy move here with the Euro pushing up alongside the stock market. So uh, as it comes up into this, you know, you might get an opportunity to short if you're if you're very short bias, if you think the stock market might have uh, a, a turn coming, you know, to the downside there very quickly, then then this one might be of interest to you. But right, like I said, uh, kind of a, a loss of direction. I would say one thing to watch out for is if you're short bias in the euro dollar, you could be, if you're, if you're trying to be patient, you could wait for a failure at this little uh, trend line we've been forming. And again, this is just going off of, you know, you've, you've had this really strong downward trend overall here, right? So I'm not a big trend line guy per se, but uh, this is an interesting one to take a look at because it's a pretty clear example on a daily chart of a downward structured market, right? Questioning whether or not it wants to break out higher or break out lower. Right. So it's at a question mark spot, if you will. Right. Sitting there thinking about it. Now, I, I say uh, I'd say, you know, personally, I'd bias more to the downside. So if anything, if you're very short bias in the euro, there might be an opportunity to pick it up again here uh, with stops above. Right. So just kind of saying, hey, you know what? I still think the trend is intact and I'd be willing to pick it up in this area. And then other traders might prefer to look for that breakout retest intraday and that might be an opportunity to think about too so you have options depending on how you personally like to trade for me um until further notice i am still short bias in the euro until it proves me wrong so as it comes up into a level like this i might be interested in picking it up on the short side um you know cautiously with with a small size and then looking to stop out above these previous highs so i think i think once you get up there that's 150 pip stop though so it's a bit big for the uh, for the for the day traders, you could you could get away with possibly trying more than once if you wanted to. So you could tighten up the stop loss, maybe put that at like 80 pips, right? As a swing trader, this would honestly be a little bit more uh, 
favorable in my opinion, just because I don't like to put you know massive stops on my trades. Of course, massive stops don't mean anything because you can just reduce your position size. Uh, but you know, it just depends on your your time frame. I, I personally prefer to stick around the four hour and one hour chart. So I, I might tighten up the stop just a little bit. And then if I really have a short bias in the euro, if something else changes, uh, I could potentially even try to sell that level again. Uh, but like I said, I think the optimal trade is seeing a rejection here and a continuation back down to lows. If that happens, you might get an excellent risk to reward opportunity on the euro dollar cross. If it doesn't and it just fails that, uh, fails that resistance, then no problem. We're just out of there for a small loss and we move on. Let's talk about gold here. Of course, XAUUSD uh, had a big pump on Friday here. Now, again, uh, similar concept, a little bit of relief rally as the dollar uh, had a sell-off. I wanna show you guys gold on the edge finder here for a second and just, just see where we're at with this. Still man maintaining a strong sell reading overall. So despite you know a, a spike of optimism, I think we have to be very cautious here as we go into the week. If you're if you're a gold bull, uh, you know you are nearing levels of resistance. And yes, we may have formed a double bottom. But again, the problem. And if if you've watched my channel for a while, you know what I'm going to say, right? You know, double bottoms don't mean a whole lot in a very strong downtrend, and double tops don't mean a whole lot in a very strong uptrend, right? They're they're going to get broken on uh, the breakout. That's the idea. So, um, you know, as you as you approach this pullback, I think if I'm looking at gold, if I caught some long side action, then I'm probably looking to scale out. That's just my personal opinion. I think once you get up into these areas, you might find sellers that are ready to take it back over uh, and look to, to sell gold. Now, you have to ask yourself, why is gold so bearish? Well, sure, technically, it's got a downtrend, but let's talk fundamentally. Let's get smart about it for a second. And what we can think about is that gold uh, is a competitor to the stock market and it's a competitor to the bond market. Uh, investors have choices. Do they want to put money in stocks? Do they want to put money in bonds? They want to put money in gold, you know, and, and it, uh, you know, kind of flip flops depending on market sentiment. Right now, market sentiment is not good. And so usually you would say, well, well, shouldn't that mean gold rises, right? People buy gold as a safe haven. Yes, which might, you know, benefit it a little bit. But the problem is the yield curve. This is something interesting that maybe the newer traders have not heard of or you know it's not very commonly spoken about in forex but it's important this is the us two-year curve and this coming down along with the dollar was probably why gold made a move up the reason for this is that this is the competitor to gold this is buying us treasuries and if us treasury yield is high at 4.48 percent roughly that's basically the closest thing you're going to get to risk-free money in financial markets. So people are saying, why would I buy gold when I could go buy US Treasury yields for 4.8% on a two year bond? I mean, that's a pretty dang good offer, right? And that's been on the rise, which has put a lot of pressure on the downside of gold. So so that's where you kind of have to compare what's your what are your notes, right? What are your um, competitors and, and gold has suffered from that. So with that coming down a little bit on Friday, it did give a little bit of a relief rally to gold. But until that trend truly breaks, you know, I think we need to be looking for sales primarily on the gold market at key levels of resistance. Now you have the 61.8 just north and the 38.2, which is near where we closed on Friday. I'm looking at those and I'm saying, okay, as that start, starts to come into play, uh, I'm getting more sell heavy as we poke up into that range. Now I could be wrong, like I said, um, you know, as always, this is why we use stops. So if I have a trade idea, sure, I could be wrong. So we have to acknowledge that and ask ourselves, what are we gonna do? Well. To me, it'd be stopping out, uh, stopping out just above that level of resistance by a little bit of margin. So, you know, something like this sort of trade. Now, of course, I'm actually not using a strict take profit when I actually pick up a position. What I'm looking to do is trail stops. Uh, so I'll usually just talk, put a target uh, as just a general idea of where I think price could go, should we be right. But, you know, really, I'd be looking for that breakout point to see the continuation to the downside on a market like gold that is trending well. So... You know, as you get that pop, like I said, just don't don't let the hypes you know get too much. Now, if it changes, let me show you guys a scenario in which case I would just be completely wrong, and then we could actually look to flip sides possibly. Let's say we get inflation cooling and we get the Fed to back off a little bit on their hawkishness, and you start seeing stuff like this. Okay, now we're talking. That's a market environment where we could look to get long gold, right? But until something starts happening like that, we are still in the confines of a strong downward trend. 
So for me, it's selling rallies, not trying to uh, call bottoms, if that makes sense. So there you go. That's a view on gold. Uh, and we'll take a look at the edge finder one more time, see what's going on. Actually, I'd like to get a quick look at the smart money tracker, see what's going on. So dollar still on top in terms of the currencies. You have gold still kind of high up there. The euro uh, pushing back. Now what we're looking at, by the way, this is... Um, this is institutional sentiment, essentially. It's basically their positionings on these assets, the non-commercial reportings from the Commitment of Traders report from the CFTC that comes out once a week. Uh, so we get the idea 50-50 um, on the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, 34-65. So that's a little bit questionable. Um, you know, as, as we see a rally, you got to be a little bit cautious. You know, you're still seeing these risk on assets like GBP, uh, NZD, right? You're seeing that quite, quite uh, low interest on the long side and much higher interest on the short side. So as you get those pops, be careful. We could speak about GBP, USD here for a moment, see what's going on with these ones. So again, uh, this one is a, a market similar to gold where we're saying, you know, as this thing rallies, yes, we might have a little bit of a room, uh, a little bit of room to, to expand, but you know, last Friday, we kind of fell apart on that, that, you know, huge momentum swing to the upside, sort of saw that stall out a little bit. And as we go into the week, you know, here's your moving averages, uh, a little jumbled, still thinking about it. We take a look at the daily chart, though. It is still quite confident to the downside there. You got your moving averages to the downside. You take a look at volatility. Volatility has been very high on the pound with that recent crash and all the, the craziness going on in the UK right now with, um, you know, prime ministers swapping out left and right and all this and that. So it's been an interesting time to say the least. So for me, same concept as, as soon as we see rallies on this thing, I'm going to, uh, you know, continue to side with the dollar until I am just completely proven wrong. And so far, that's been a really, really good strategy for me uh, this past year or two has just been buying the dollar on dips and, uh, you know, stops below if, if we're wrong, or in this case, stops above if we're shorting the pound buying the dollar, right? So, you know, as you get a poke up into 1.40, uh, sorry, 1.145, you get a poke up into those areas. I think you might have opportunities to try and sell the pound, um, you know, it just, just until further notice, the idea is trend continuation plays, you know, and you might get a second chance if you're, if you're being really patient on that 1.17, but really I like the trade idea here. If this thing fails out, uh, I would actually be less interested in trying to sell it again, just because again, uh, I'm looking for this trend to continue rather quickly. Uh, and that would be where I'm at with it. Taking a look at the edge finder on the pound, by the way, we could take a look at uh, GBP USD. By the way, if you don't have the edge finder, I haven't mentioned it yet. It'll be linked down below in the description. If you'd like access to it, there'll be a promo code and a link. Oh, look at this. The pound actually kind of coming in mixed with the recent trend to the upside here, picking up some momentum. Um, you've had sort of on the lower time frames some strength come in. So maybe the edge finder sort of waiting uh, in terms of trend reading, uh, looking for it to kind of flip back to the other direction and then looking for that continuation, which might be uh, you know a play to consider as well. Uh, like I said, the pound, I, there might be a short in this area, but for me, it's just not as interesting as some of the other things like gold and the euro on the short side um, and then the dollar yen on the long side. So that's kind of where I'm at with this uh, for now. So NZD USD, let's see what's going on. Neutral here, USD JPY, we mentioned this is a buy uh, bias and then USD CHF, also a buy bias. We can take a look at that one. That's one that I would like to be long. And look at that, we might get the opportunity to pick it up at that same level. So I've, I've been making some good trades with the dollar Swiss. The, the dollar Swiss has been really good to me. I'll show you guys this. So all of these, by the way, are tracked inside of our Discord channel. I mentioned this earlier. I've been very busy on, here's NZD JPY, PY. Here's, I traded Euro NZD. Here's USDCHF. Um, so USDCHF. I've been trading this one a lot. Dollar Swiss again. Um, Dollar Swiss update. So I've been trading this thing constantly. And you can actually see all of my trade history on the Dollar Swiss right now. So I went long here on a retest intraday. It was a nice swing back and then shot to the upside and then closed it out here. Bought it here, got stopped out. So I'll show you guys. So we had a winner here. We had, this was a loser, so I'll come back to that. A winner here, right? Bought here, closed on the pullback. Uh, bought here, closed out. Bought here, closed out. Bought here, closed out. So, and then we had a loser right here. So, so one loser. And what was this? One, two, three, four, five, five winners. 
And again, all those were called out inside of the Discord. If you're inside of the VIP group, feel free to go to my trade section. Uh, like I said, it's right here and you can just scroll through and, and read up on the trades and read through the breakdowns if you'd like to understand them. With every trade I share, a key component to it is I don't believe in just like, hey, I'm buying this, do the same. Like I'm not a fan of that. I'm a big fan though of journaling trades and allowing other people to read through the full concepts. So this is essentially my journal. I journal every trade that I take, right? Why I'm taking the trade, the edge finder analysis behind it, you know, screenshots of the trade, uh, broke breakdowns on the edge finder. So all of this, like I said, is available inside of our VIP discord. It is a service that myself, Frank and our team, we have, um, we have seven people that, that uh, moderate and, and operate, you know, the Discord server for traders. We have thousands of people. So if you'd like to join, the, you know, sort of a more level, a professional level uh, Discord server for this stuff, then I invite you to do so. Click the link down below in the description and join us. I hope this was helpful to you guys as we go into the week. I'll be looking for more opportunities to trade stuff and uh, we will see you in the next video. Thanks very much for tuning in.